Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Pudgy Pig from Kikai Sentai Zenkaiger. Did you catch the mistake? Good job. It's actually from Common Rider Revice. Just kidding. It's from Spider-Man No Way Home. Seriousness, it's from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I don't even know where I was going with this bit. So this is our next monster figure. I think they kind of did away with this idea of there being a subline of monsters. I don't even think they labeled the boxes different, but it is different from your average lightning collection figure because it is larger. It's a larger scale. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the accessories first to get it out of the way. So it comes with your little standard lightning effect part. Really nothing's too special to write home about. Got two extra hands. One of them is just a generic open hand and the other one's just a closed fist. And the ones that are on him are both for holding his weapons. Speaking of, brilliant segue, Dawson. His weapons, which are a knife and a fork, which honestly is one of the negatives. Like, it's nice that he includes them, but they look really cheap. I mean, it's hard to make these look amazing because they're just meant to be silver slash gray. But I think they stand out as looking more like the basic weapons from old Power Rangers toys because of them just being gray. And it probably would have cost more, but it would have been nice if they were maybe like a, a shiny silver. Oh, that's not a deal breaker for me, though. Like, I'm not going to be like, Hasbro doesn't care. They didn't paint it silver. I just think it would look nicer and these just come off looking a little bit cheaper and make it seem like it's part of the basic way. And they just don't look that great, in my opinion. But they're not like a feature of the figure for me. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? I, it's worth noting that there are two versions of this figure. This is the standard quote-unquote retail version. I don't know why I put quotes around that, but what I mean is it's just a regular version you can get on. Uh, Hasbro Pulse now has it on regular um, Amazon, on Target.com. I don't know if it's going to show up at Target stores. It might, but as of this recording, it's only available on those websites that I've seen. So it's just a standard version coming with exactly what I just showed you. Now, when it was first unveiled, uh, they did show a collector's edition version, which was like a con exclusive that comes with a lunchbox. Like, it's packaged in this 90s edition lunchbox meant to look like 90s lunchboxes and the only other thing that's unique about it is it does come with some food like a pie and like a casserole or something that it can eat so if that's important to you there is that version and I'll address that at the end but I just wanted to note that here so let's go ahead and talk about the figure so you have your par for the course stuff here you know it's you got your articulation here with the ball joint right here at the arm you have the swiveling you have the elbow joint it does it doesn't move quite as much as some of the others, like on the Rangers and whatnot. You have a little hinge joint here on the fist. You have a ball joint on the leg, knee joint here on the leg as well. It's a little bit clicky. And then you have a hinge joint at the foot. Obviously, he doesn't have head and neck articulation because his whole body is the head and neck, but he can open and close his mouth and it looks honestly disturbing. And it looks like something I probably shouldn't say on camera, but it also does get the details like pretty well done in terms of the show. Like, I remember when they did a close-up of him eating, and they had kind of showed these folds, and it looks fairly accurate to that, and so I'll say that they did a good job on that. And it's articulated as well as it can be for a figure like this. It's kind of like uh, the old Pokemon figure arts, like Blastoise. Like, you can't have him being as articulated as a normal figure. It's just not possible. The only thing's worth noting is I do, unfortunately, have some loose leg problems on there, so you might want to watch out for that. Um, and let's just talk about the scale here I just brought in. Here's the scale. He's obviously kind of slouching a little bit because he has to do those pseudo splits to be able to stand up, but you can see the scale there, which I know is something a lot of people will point out. So I'll say, let's talk about the figure like this. Let's talk about the pros and cons. So the pros are, I think that the mold details on this are absolutely excellent. They left this out so long it molded. No, I'm just kidding. That was like a weird dad joke. Anyway, but the, the mold details are really just excellent on these, which I think they've always done good on the monster figures so far. I personally really like the last two monster figures. I know that some people were up in arms over some missing details. There was only a couple that bothered me, like Pumpkin not having the eyes colored in quite as much. But other than that, they were pretty much a non-issue for me. And with him, there's not a whole lot of details you can miss because he doesn't have a whole lot going on. He has this helmet going on, and then he looks like just a big fleshy ball, and like that's literally it. So for me, it looks really accurate, and I think they did a really excellent and well-detailed job on the sculpt. Especially, like I said, with the mouth, it really, like when I first opened it this much, it reminded me of the close-ups of when they showed him eating, and then when I opened it farther, it scared me a little bit. And it's a really nice size. I know that there's going to be people that complain about the scale. Uh, people were really up in arms about the scale of the other two monsters, and for me, so long as it's roughly in the neighborhood, it's totally fine, and I think people overreact about it. But I'll just say that I think it's a very good-looking figure uh, for that. Now, for the cons, 
Unfortunately, he is a little bit top heavy. That's almost unavoidable with what type of character he is. I think the only way that they could avoid that is to make him hollow in the middle, which would make him feel cheap, or at least a little bit more hollow, but he is a little bit top heavy, especially with loose legs. That being said, it is a little bit better than I thought it would be. I, I'm able to get him to stand more often than not, which is nice, but it definitely is an issue at times, which can be kind of annoying. Now let's go ahead and let's compare him to the only other version I have. I don't remember if I ever did an eight inch scale one, but this is the old five inch scale one that we have here. And obviously this one's junk compared to this. I mean, this guy can't even open his mouth with an on command button and he doesn't even have storage like this. This guy is the G. Seriousness though, like this is obviously an upgrade. Again, I don't remember whether they did an eight inch scale version, but I imagine that this detail wise is gonna be a lot better looking than most of the old ones, especially this one. I forgot even how bad this looked. I haven't pulled this out of my collection in forever, but this basically, this honestly looks way more disturbing and it basically kind of has an action figure bit or figure, it isn't it? It's an action figure bit. They both have an action figure bit because they're action figures. No, an action feature bit. I think I remember the gimmick was that you could put the weapons in his mouth and they'd come out the other end, which is kind of disturbing in retrospect, but it's an obvious upgrade there. The one other negative I do have is this piece comes off and this isn't necessarily a negative because they put this in the box like this to save space. But for me, it has a really hard time securing. Like I'll press it in there and I press as hard as I could. I even press it against the table and it still pops off fairly easily. For me, I think it's just that because of this clashing with this piece here, it just can't get the pegs down in there far enough. Maybe that's just the way mine's molded so that it's just off enough that it can't do that. So I find that to be annoying. So overall, this is a little bit of a mixed release. I would say the biggest issues I have, again, is the top heaviness and the helmet. But other than that, I think it's really good looking. And I think if you're interested in something like this and you really like the monsters and the way it looks, I think you'll be happy with it. It's far from perfect, but I think you'll be happy with it. It's not my personal favorite thing because I don't really care so much about the monsters of the week, but I have liked them a little bit more than I thought. I will say, other than the fact that he just seems a little bit more well-rounded detail-wise because because he doesn't have as much to miss. I did prefer the other two that we've gotten so far with Pumpkin and Sphinx. But overall, like this is kind of something that if you're really interested in it, I think you'll like it. But otherwise, it's a little bit mixed. One thing I will say is, I would rec even though I don't have the Lunchbox one in hand, unless the Lunchbox, for whatever reason, speaks to you personally, or you really want the food props, I would definitely pick this up. You're saving like over 20 bucks, and the Lunchbox version just seems unnecessary. Like, I like the idea, and there was lunchboxes like that in the 90s, but they're not even recreating a specific Power Rangers lunchbox that exists. It's kind of like those weird Megazords they have that are based off of VHS tapes that never existed. It's like the real seven figures. It's like a nostalgia for something that never happened. It's like a nostalgia for a Mandela effect thing that no one remembers. It's just weird. My bottom line is, is if you want to get this, unless those perks really speak to you, I definitely recommend going for this one. I will review the collector's one, but I can just say right now, I think that you might as well save 20 plus dollars. That's about it for this one though, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.